<sighs> okay. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Jedi Night's Watch. My name is Graham and today I am bringing you another Hot Toys review. Here we have in front of us the Hot Toys War Machine Mark VI from Endgame. Now they just reissued the Mark I and that was a, a big hype. Everybody was really happy and I coincidentally just bought this guy two days before that figure was announced. Which, you know, isn't a big deal. I probably didn't want to wait a whole another year just for him to come out but I have been kicking around the idea of adding this war machine to my uh, to my Iron Man for a long time now and you know Rhodey isn't one of my most favorite Avengers but um, you know he's obviously not like an Iron Man a Captain America a Thor you know he's kind of one of the side characters and you know so I was just kind of going back and forth for a while and you know he looks cool but he is kind of expensive uh, well, Sideshow was offering 10% and free shipping for Iron Man Day, so I said, what the hell, let's do it. So here he is, and let's just take a look at the box, but before we do that, I want to ask you guys to please like this video. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel, um, be a part of the watch. We're continuing to grow, and we can't do it without you. And ring that bell so you're notified when we're coming out with new content. The box itself does seem thicker and more hefty compared to the normal art boxes that we typically see. And it really should be since this guy is going to be die cast. We have a great portrait of War Machine on the front and it has a real nice metallic look to it. And we have the A for Avengers kind of worked its way in there and I really dig this box. Towards the bottom we have the Avengers logo and on the back we have the creators and the warnings of the figure. This is going to be a slip cover, but it slides open on the left side, and then we're left with a nice styrofoam package that holds our war machine. When we open the top of that up, we can see our figure, and then on the bottom of the styrofoam, we have a compartment for our base and batteries. Holy cow, so many batteries. Let me know in the comments if you guys actually take the time to put these batteries in your figure. I want to know if it's worth the pain to uh, install each one and uh, open every compartment up, so let me know. And as we take a closer look at the figure, this guy looks beefy and super slick. Let's get him out of the box, but first let's take a look at the base that he comes with and the accessories. Alright, we're going to start with the base here. It does come with the dynamic pole and waist grabber. And we do have a uh, typical end game style base here. And um, we've seen these before with uh, the other end game figures that we've reviewed. But you can just see the cool design here. We do have the Avengers A as well and that is going to be a bit glossy where this is going to be more of a matte finish and this is going to have more of a texture to it and this is going to be very smooth. We do have the Avengers Endgame logo right there and then on the front we do have War Machine in a nice simple um, style there as well. Here is where the dynamic pole will plug in. So just be careful when putting your War Machine in a um, dynamic uh, pose or an aerial pose because this, it, this does have a small base to it and he's a very heavy figure, so um, you do have to get him to balance just right in order to um, avoid having him topple over. So this is the base, pretty cool looking, but um, obviously not too much different than we're used to seeing. We do have the, the War Machine logo integrated with the Avengers A, and it does look very nice. So um, let's move on to the accessories that this guy comes with. Alright guys, don't let this image fool you. This is literally all the accessories that uh, our war machine comes with. So, I get it. He doesn't come with a ton, but you also got to remember that the uh, price seems to reflect this a little bit. Um, he does come in under, you know, anywhere from $40 to $50 under a typical Iron Man figure. So they did kind of drop the price a little bit because obviously war machine doesn't come with a whole lot. Um, but let's just take a look at everything here. We do have his shoulder cannon an extra head sculpt with our Don Cheadle likeness, um, the faceplate, and then we do have two blaster hands and then two articulated finger hands. Let's take a look at them more closely. Alright, so here we do have the shoulder cannon and uh, this is a pretty boring accessory if, if you're gonna ask me. Um, the paint application is just a straight on black color there's no weathering, there's no heat treatment, there's no scratches or anything like that. This looks like a toy. And that is a little disappointing, seeing as though we're paying so much for the figure. Um, the cannon here does rotate a little bit here. And then this is on a swivel. And uh, 
a joint right here as well. It does just pin right into the shoulder of the figure. Um, but yeah, I think a missed opportunity here with uh, with this cannon. I think it could have been done a little bit better. Next, we do have the Don Cheadle head sculpt, and I think this is very impressive. Now, I do know that this is the same exact head sculpt from the Mark IV, and because I don't have that figure, this is my first War Machine. I'm blown away by this head sculpt. Um, I think it looks a lot like Rhodey. It looks like uh, Don Cheadle, you know, from the profile. You know, and then we have straight on. I think it's a super head sculpt. So I do understand why they didn't necessarily feel the need to update it. But I don't know. With this figure, you know, with the accessories at least, it just seems like they're kind of skimping over. You know, the paint application, just a couple hands, and then a head sculpt. But the head sculpt does look pretty good. We do have some articulation here on the bottom of the helmet. And the helmet is pretty much just like the Mark IV. Um, but we do have nice paint chips here and weathering going on. You know, it's not like battle damage, but you can just tell he's using the suit, and um, it looks really good. I do love the color scheme that they went with, with like a gun metal and then a silver. Um, so just a really sleek uh, head sculpt here. And then we do have the faceplate, which comes with red lenses, and it's going to look uh, more like a chrome, and it's just going to kind of fit on like so. And then it is magnetic as well, so if you want to have the uh, the mask open, you can do that. All right, and then finally we do have the hands here. We do have the two blaster hands where the pegs are going to be in a different spot. And if we flip them over, you can see the uh, the lenses there for the blasters look pretty cool. And then just taking a look at an articulated hand, um, so they do have uh, joints in all the fingers which is pretty cool you can kind of pose that however you want um, looking at it again you know you have some slight weathering here and some paint chips which is always good to see you like to see that detail in the hands but um, a typical Iron Man type of, of hand here so uh, let's move on and get the figure out here and take a closer look all right so here we have our first look at the figure and he's definitely not as bulky as previous versions but he still is a big figure and he still carries a lot of weight i love the stealth look to the figure and uh, i think with the gunmetal and the gray colors or the silver it looks really really good together and he, for me he's not too big but he's not too small i just think he's really sleek and, and stealthy and you can definitely tell that this is more of an innovative war machine look and uh, I dig it, man. It's pretty sweet. If we uh, we start up here, and um, I do have the roadie head sculpt on there right now. Just put that back on. And then we have mounted the uh, shoulder cannon, and it just slots right into the shoulder there, and it looks pretty cool. So it does have uh, some posability here. You know, on the top of the head, we kind of looked at this before. Both head sculpts are the exact same, but you do have some scratches and whatnot there. You're going to have a lot of battery compartments on this figure. So the um, reactor slot, battery slots in right here. This piece right here comes off to put the batteries in for the eyes. And then you do have LED lights here, as well as right here, I believe. Right there, yeah. So these plates come off as well, and um, you would put the batteries in there. Guys, I'm sorry, you can roast me in the comments if you want. I just, I don't put batteries in my figures. I don't like it. It doesn't seem practical to me because for the amount of time it takes to put the batteries in, they last maybe a couple minutes. And then just for the hassle it is to turn them on. You gotta take the plate off, put the batteries in, turn it on, put the plate back on. And then when you're done, take the plate off, turn it off. I, Call me lazy if you want in the comments. I just, it's just not something that that I do with my figures. Um, so there is that. But taking a look at some of the other stuff here, um, a lot of this is gonna be die cast and you, you'll know cause it'll be kind of cold to the touch. Um, so these shoulder plates are gonna be die cast. A lot of other, like most of the legs are gonna be die cast here in the thigh area. But um, you got the reactor here. Here it says U.S. Colonel James Rhodes. You got really cool like vents and then look at all this, the paint scratches and just the chips in the armor. It doesn't look battle damaged, but it just looks worn and realistic. It just gives a realistic look to the suit, which I can really appreciate. Coming down to the arms here, really cool gauntlets. You got vents here and then just extra detail again, just really minor 
details that Hot Toys uh, put on this figure that really just puts him over the top. Um, I think it looks really cool. Going to the back of the figure here, you can kind of just see what's going on there as well. Some people have complained that the legs look a little too thin on this figure. I don't see it. I think he looks pretty good. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I, again, I think the smaller look is more of my preference. You know, I, I'm just not as big of a fan as the huge bulky one, but I, I do understand why some people are. So that's, you know, to each their own. But I, I think it looks good. I think it looks proportionate. Look, I think it looks all right. We got the six here for the Mark VI, and then some more military um, decals here as well. And then on the bottom, we do have the boots. So the ankles, they don't seem loose. However, because of the weight of this figure, I was actually playing with them and posing them, and I turned my back for a split second, and he toppled over, and I broke off one of these uh, fins right here. So I had to glue it back on, but it's definitely still loose. So again, just one of those courtesy reminders to, you know, always just uh, just be very careful with these things. You know, don't ever turn your back because you never know when they're going to topple over, and uh, they are expensive, so you do want to take care of them. And um, yeah, he is he is really heavy, so um, which is cool, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. But yeah, just taking a really close look here. I'm I'm impressed. I, I like this figure a lot. I was on the fence for a while, but. Um, he's really cool in hand so let's get him into some poses and talk about some of the things that we like about the figure and some things not so much looking at the articulation of the figure we start with the head and you can look up about that far and down about this far there is a ball joint on the neck as well as in the head so it's got that kind of movement going on as well arm goes out to an easy 90 there is a swivel here, and then there is a double bend in the elbow, but you can just see it starts to, to hit itself here, so that's really all the movement you're going to get. We talked about the crunch ability, um, just that much, but then when you pull it out, definitely a, a lot more there, and back as well. And normal swivel here on the wrists, the thighs pretty far out just be careful of these fins there's a nice ratchet in the knees you can hear that click really like that that's really really nice and um, you can get the bend all the way pretty much back and then we do have uh, these flaps help you it's kind of like a split cut boot design so you do have rockability and and whatnot there and just show you how the leg comes down just be careful if it's all the way up this flap will not go in so you have to have it one down and then it'll go in so that is the articulation of the figure so here we have our war machine standing next to our Iron Man Mark 7 they're back to back they're getting ready to do battle um, just wanted to kind of compare them to each other. Uh, looks like Iron Man is a hair taller than the War Machine, um, but the they just go so well together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Like you got the Iron Man red, and then you got the gun metal of War Machine, and they're just, again, just looking so badass. And I love having these two together. I think if you have an Iron Man, you need a War Machine. If you have a War Machine, you obviously need an Iron Man, but um, really fun to display together. So now that we've had our in-depth unboxing and review of the War Machine Mark VI, let's talk about some of the things that we really like about the figure and some things not so much. Starting with the things that I really like about the figure, I'm going to say the suit detail and the suit style. I really love how you have all of the paint chips and um, just the wear and tear and the, the detail, the vents. Um, in the in the suit here as well as the style of the suit where it's not too bulky but not too slim I think it's right in the the middle there I think it shows how the suit has evolved through time and kind of gotten more sleek and slim and I like it I think it's proportionate it looks great um, I'm not a huge fan of the big bulky ones so I think this one just suits my personality perfectly 
The next thing I like about the figure is the fact that we get a roadie head sculpt, a Don Cheadle head sculpt. Uh, I know that some people are like, well, this is an old head sculpt and this is from the Mark IV, and I totally understand that, but I never owned that one. So this is new to me, and you know, Don Cheadle never ages. He looks the same now as he did basically in 1999. Um, so his head sculpt can probably stay the same for a while, and I think it, it's spot on, and it looks just like him, and I'm glad that they added that in. And the final thing that I like about the figure, and this kind of goes without saying nowadays, but the fact that he's die-cast, he is heavy-duty, he feels realistic, and um, it's just a, it's a really good feeling to have in the hand with this figure. Now let's talk about some of the things that we dislike about the figure. The first thing would be the shoulder cannon. This was a missed opportunity by Hot Toys. Um, no, no heat treatment, no uh, weathering, no paint scratches or anything like that uh, on the cannon. And it just looks like they just painted it a flat black. And it's, it just looks a little toyish. So it would have been nice since we have a suit that has enough detail in it. Why not have the cannon as well? Second thing that I don't like about the figure is um, that the ankles don't seem to be strong enough to hold the figure up unless he's propped perfectly. Um, he is die cast, so he's going to be top heavy, and it just seems like uh, he wants to fall forward. It's not that the ankles are loose, but I just don't think they were they're built well enough for um, a die cast figure. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't have any issues with my Iron Man, but. Um, you saw in the beginning of the video, it's just he keeps wanting to topple over. And at one point, he actually did topple over when I turned my back. Um, so he, he took quite a fall. He broke one of the fins off of the foot, but luckily I was able to glue it on, so it's, it's okay. But just be very careful when posing this guy. Outside of that, there's nothing that I dislike about this figure. I'm really glad that I was able to purchase him, and he goes great with my Iron Man figure. And right now, if you want to get your own War Machine figure, he is in stock at Sideshow.com, and he does have free shipping, so take advantage of that while you can. All right, guys, well, hopefully you like this video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite War Machine figure is. Do you like the more bulky style, or do you like this more slimmed-down style? I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you did like this video, Please give us a thumbs up as that really helps the channel and it really keeps us going. And uh, if you haven't already, I don't know what you're waiting for. Subscribe to the channel and be a part of the watch. All right, guys, I'm heading out of here. But until next time, stay safe out there and we'll see you soon.